Indian Kotipulet Matter in Patna City, which has been prepared in 2021 by the Energy Resources Institute and the Center for Environment, Energy and Climate Change at Adri. May I now request uh, Member Secretary uh, Shri Chandrasekhar Sir to present the, uh, present the bouquet to our well esteemed guests. May I also request Member Secretary Chandrasekhar Sir to sh uh, share his welcome address. Bihar State Pollution Control Board, Bihar, Adri Patna, the Energy Research Institute, Delhi, then Bloomberg Philanthropies, ke taraf se, aap sabhi ka main aaj swagat karta hu. Aaj ka ye karikram, Receptor Modeling Based Source Opportunity Study of Ambient Particulate Matter in Patna City, 2021 ka, aaj ka is report ka, adhiyan ka, prativedan ka vimochan, mananiyam, मंत्री महोदय पर्यावरण वन एवं जलवायु परिवर्तन विभाग बिहार सरकार के कर्मकांडों द्वारा आज संपन्न होना है इसके लिए हम सब एकत्रित हुए हैं इस कार्यक्रम में आप सभी का स्वागत है अभिनंदन है हम सब अवगत है बिहार में सबसे ज्यादा प्रदूषित शहरों में से तीन शहर सम्मिलित है गया पटना मुजफ्फरपुर और बिहार राज्य का पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी सबसे अधिक है पूरा राज्य पूरा देश में 1106 व्यक्ति प्रति स्क्वायर किलोमीटर रहते हैं जितना जन आबादी की संख्या ज्यादा है उतना ही प्राकृतिक संसाधन और अन्य संसाधनों का भी वो निर्भरता बहुत ज्यादा रहती है जितना इसका कपत होते हैं उतना ही प्रदूषण का भी एक कारक बनता है और एक स्रोत बनती है और यह प्रासंगिक या जो ये अध्ययन सिर्फ पटना से संबंधित है वर्ष 2018-19 में बिहार राज्य प्रदूषण नियंत्रण परिषद आदरी एवं सी स्टेप संस्था तीन संस्था मिलकर से इसी तरह की प्रकार की अध्ययन किया गया था जो उसको डिस्पर्शन मॉडलिंग के तरह तहत किया गया था अभी वर्तमान में रिसेप्टर मॉडलिंग के तहत किया गया है दोनों मॉडल जो पोल्यूशन के स्रोतों को पहचान करना और कौन स्रोत से कितना प्रतिशत में उसकी योगदान रहती है इसी के बारे में वो अध्ययन के संबंधित रहती है इतना ही शब्दों इसी का वो वो अब 
वर्तमान में जो सत्तर मॉडलिंग से संबंधित जो होते हैं यह प्रतिवेदन इससे थोड़ा सा और रिफाइंड होके हो रहते हैं और ये भी इसी तरह का प्रदूषण के कारकों के बारे में ही वो प्रतिवेदित करती है और इसका समाधान के लिए भी अपना अनुशंसा रखती है और इसी के आधार पर पटना का क्लीन एयर एक्शन प्लान करके एक प्रतिवेदन वो उसका एक कार्य योजना तैयार कर उसी पर अमल किया जा रहा है विभिन्न स्टेक होल्डर डिपार्टमेंट के तरफ मैं इतने ही शब्दों के साथ मैं अभी श्री नीरज कुमार सिंह माननीय मंत्री महोदय पर्यावरण वन एवं जलवायु परिवर्तन विभाग बिहार सरकार को इस कार्यक्रम में अध्यक्षता करने के इस कार्यक्रम में विशेष अतिथि के रूप में पधारने के लिए और आज के इस अध्ययन प्रतिवेदन का विमोचन करने के लिए आने के लिए मैं बहुत बहुत स्वागत करता हूँ इसी प्रकार श्री दीपक कुमार सिंह जी प्रधान सचिव महोदय पर्यावरण वन एवं जलवायु परिवर्तन विभाग बिहार सरकार को दिल से इस कार्यक्रम में पधारने के लिए ए, आ, आ, मैं स्वागत करता हूँ श्री प्रोफेसर अशोक कुमार श्री अशोक कुमार घोष अध्यक्ष बिहार राज्य प्रदूषण नियंत्रण परिषद पटना को मैं इस कार्यक्रम में स्वागत करता हूँ श्री प्रोफेसर प्रभात पी घोष मेंबर सेक्रेटरी एशियन डेवलपमेंट रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट पटना को इस कार्यक्रम में आने के लिए मैं आपको मैं स्वागत करता हूँ सर मिस सुरुचि बर्नवाल डायरेक्टर थेरी जो इस जो संस्था इस अध्ययन में मुख्य भूमिका निभाई है उनको मैं इस कार्यक्रम में मैं स्वागत करता हूँ मैडम मिस पूजा तिवारी इंडिया कोऑर्डिनेटर क्लाइमेट एंड एनवायरमेंट प्रोग्राम ब्लूमबर्ग फिलानथ्रोपिस्ट मैडम आपको भी मैं इस कार्यक्रम में आपको मैं स्वागत करता हूँ डॉक्टर आर सुरेश फेलो एंड एरिया कन्वेनर द एनर्जी रिसोर्स इंस्टीट्यूट न्यू दिल्ली को मैं आमंत्रित करता हूँ इस स्वागत करता हूँ इस कार्यक्रम में आप सभी को मेरे साथियों बिहार स्टेट पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड की तरफ से जो आए हुए साथी हैं सिया के अध्यक्ष महोदय सैक्ट स्टेट एक्सपर्ट अप्रोसल कमेटी के अध्यक्ष जी आपको भी मैं इस कार्यक्रम में स्वागत करता हूँ और इस श्री अस्तोष जी प्रधान मुख्य वन संरक्षक हेड ऑफ फॉरेस्ट फोर्स बिहार पटना को इस कार्यक्रम में अपना बहुमूल्य समय देकर आए हैं उनको भी मैं स्वागत करता हूँ पर्यावरण वन विभाग के वरीय पदाधिकारी गण यहाँ पधारे हुए हैं और साथियों भी हैं आप सभी को एक एक को मैं स्वागत करता हूँ मीडिया कर्मियों को भी मैं स्वागत करता हूँ बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद I now request our honourable minister, Shri Neeraj Kumar Singh, Department of Environment, to release the report. Thank you. May I now request Mr. R. Subesh, fellow and area convener from the Energy Resources Institute. to brief us all about the study Uh, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, it's a very honourable uh, uh, person, honour to be uh, here to present the findings of the study that we have carried out 
this location will be identified based on the prevailing wind direction and also based on the different language control pattern of the city. So, ambient air quality monitoring will be carried out. Once the ambient air quality monitoring is carried out, then you will further analyze the samples collected to different metals, ions, and ECOs, carbon content. Then you have to parallelly have to compare the source profile. What are the sources which you are identifying as sources which are very much important in any of the source of personal You have to by virtually look at the sources which are contributing to the air quality. So that needs to be identified, and based on that, the source profiles will be identified. Wherever possible, the soil profiles will be we use or want to develop the soil profiles. In the absence of this, we will be using uh, soil profiles of other uh, agencies which are going basically for the line sector, for the transport sector, AI yeah, developed the soil profiles, and IAG Bombay and uh, other agencies are really developed for, for different uh, sources. These two act as an input to the receptor modeling, and then that will be giving the soil support models based on the folks who are contributing to the economy. So, based on the language land cover and prevailing wind directions, we have selected uh, seven monetary locations, six within the city, and one outside the city, which is basically in the upwind direction. So, when you look at the wind strategy of Spartan, it is very much clear that the only wind is somewhere the wind pattern is completely opposite. So, you know, wind is the wind is coming from uh, northwest direction and uh, the summer it is coming from east direction. So, accordingly, we have selected Two background locations, one in winter and one in summer. And in addition to that, uh, I already told you that based on the language and the pattern, more areas are residentially nature. So we have selected three residential locations within the city, one in cultural location and one in industrial location uh, for happy air quality monitoring. So the locations were identified in consultation with officials from uh, pollution control board and also RB. So, in the monitoring instrument, we have installed at all those locations, and the monitoring is carried on for two seasons. In each season, we have monitored 15 continuous days for uh, PM10 and PM2.5. So, the analyzed results indicate that in both the seasons, especially in winter, the PM2.5 concentration is much above the national ambient air quality standard. This is the reason behind the study is carrying on, you know, this is the reason for. And then, but now the moment I'm in city. And then, for the daily, I mean, PM time constant in the range is from uh, range from 2003 to 2017 to 2017 to different locations. During the winter season, uh, the time for the summer season, they vary from 32 micrograms to 64 micrograms to 60 meters during summer season. And same is the case in time in PM 2.5 PM time concentration. So, uh, this is the range of so this is the, the right hand side indicates the spatial distribution of monitoring uh, uh, users that we are carried at this location. So, when you look at the currently indicates the standard. So, when you look at the bar, most of the locations are writing some as above that. Next slide. So, this is the overall depiction of the ambient air quality carried out different locations. So, currently indicates the standard. So it is 60, uh, four, it is 40 micrometer. So most of the location you can find that, especially in the winter season, there are some much above that and ambient air quality standards. Then once you have done the ambient air quality, you are just uh, collecting samples from different filter media like telephone, bots, and other media, which is basically for the analysis of the analysis. Because once you want to know the metal and then iron and then or carbon and then how to collect samples from different filter media. Metals will be basically metals and ions are basically collected for petroleum filter media and carbon is basically used for pulse filter media. So these samples collected for both PM10 and PM2.5 are then further analyzed for this metals, iron and then easy okay and total carbon pattern. Next slide please. So this is the overall uh, chemical characterization results. I don't want to go into the details of this because uh, when we look at the uh, results, ions are the most dominating chemical constant in 2.5 samples that was followed by uh, unknown uh, sample, uh, unidentified sources. Next slide. You can skip the next one because this is the further division of the within metals. What are the major contributors? You can skip this next, please. 
So this is the family convolution within ion. So basically, when you look at the ladies, our ammonia sulfate and chloride were the most dominant ion mixtures in the environment samples. Uh, this is the reason why the ion ammonia is basically the reason for the secondary particulate matter formation. So when you look at the final reading, you can find the secondary particulate is a major contributor in uh, ambient PM2.5 samples in winter seasons. So ammonia is very, I think, the most abundant ion species in ambient PM2.5 samples across all the location. Next please. This is the carbon content. This is the element. Both two carbons are analyzed. Only the element is carbon and it's organic carbon. So the results indicate that the EC, the proportional EC ratio between 40 to 30 percent across different monetary locations. And the highest EC loss ratio in ambient is the record industry location. Basically, industry, this uh, ratio of EC to OC is basically high when you use these or other fuels in the earth. Uh, basically, industry, you can, you can find a lot of tracks and other diesel generators operating that could be one of the reasons for the high EC loss ratio of industrial location. Next slide. Please. So once you have done the, if you have targeted the samples, then you have analyzed the of different metals, ions, and organic content. Now we are the process of getting into the uh, receptor models. So there are different thousand models to be followed. So what you want to do is you have formally constitutional model, which is basically we are using CMD 8.2 model is the model that you have used for so it's a portion of PM and in particular in Then you have to identify potential sources within Pana. Then obtaining that. So once you identify the sources, you need to get the source profile of each of the sources. Then obtaining and analyze samples for major components. So once the collected samples will be further analyzed for different major components that already discussed in the previous slides. Then you have to quantify the contribution to the chemical mass analysis. So that way results will be the sources which are contributing to the prevailing air quality of Pernam. Next slide. So this is the overall result of the uh, MAS for result of uh, modeling carrying out at all the locations for both the seasons. So when you look at the data, you can find that dust, dust basically it is very difficult to identify, distinguish dust from different because dust is generated from water, tree formation, construction activities, other soil dust. So this model cannot simply distinguish the uh, dust from different leaf soils. So when dust is such a water dust we have collected. So this dust is the major contributor of ambient PM 2.5 it is ranges from 21 to 38% across different seasons. Different locations in ambient PM2 content during summer season. But in our secondary particular is contributing, which is about 20, 20, 90, 40 percent across different locations during winter season. Secondary particular is basically uh, formed due to the reaction between ammonia and sulfur dioxide and nitrogen. Ammonia reacts with sulfur dioxide to form ammonium sulfate, and ammonia reacts with nitrogen dioxide to form ammonia nitrate, which are the basically contributing to the overall PM10 of the uh, area. Next slide, please. So, this is all the overall, this is the average of all the locations value when you look at the pie chart, you can see that the PM2 and summer and winter. So, just in the during the summer season, you can find that dust project from soil water and construction and is contribute to more in summer than in winter because you know during summer the wind is coming from outside, so that will take out the contribution to outside within the city. So, we just basically we know that in the, the Spina city surrounded by the Ganges and a lot of dust will be organic from the sediments and which will be coming inside the city. So, this is the main reason the dust is contributing more in during summer season. Oh. On the other hand, secondary particulates are found to be higher in winter season than in summer. Because in winter season, ammonia reacts more with the nitrogen to form ammonia nitrate. So, this would be one of the reasons for, for the highest contribution of secondary particulates during winter season. Next. So, this is a, an attempt has also been made to compare the our study findings with the CCHD study that we have done in 2019 by Peter and the so the results were more or less uh, complementing each other, but only, only one cannot directly correlate the readings of so hormone and comparison is not possible because of two small reasons. One in, in the dispersion model, the, the, the contribution from the different sectors are only within the city contribution because they have an estimated outside contribution separately, which is about about 46% of the contribution of partner is from outside the city. But when you, in the receptor model, what you do is the secondary particular contribution is included, which is not accounted in the dispersion model. Actually. So, a direct comparison of both the model results is not act exactly right, but in, for a comparative purpose, we can attempt that. But uh, the, the second the rest from the outside contribution basically uh, contributing to the uh, overall concentration in 
does the all the time local source like residents of sector are contributing. But the secondary population is basically coming from transport and the industrial sector. You have transport that you can find the high NOx concentration in these transport activities, which is basically causing the formation of uh, ammonia nitrate. And in the industry, also, there are other sources of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. There, also, you can find the higher rate of secondary particulate formation because the sulfur and nitrate react with ammonia to form ammonia nitrate and nitrate. Again, I want to look at the next Then, uh, as for that, uh, review from Dr. Gosh from GPCG uh, has asked us to uh, compare the result with the another positive matrix formula, another statistical model. So, we have attended the same model. Here, the, because the more the statistical model, the results are more or less comparable. So, we can find the results of the other model with the PMO. So, in both the results, 29% does the contribution does generate a 29% and 24%. And 37% PMO in both the approaches are increased. So, if you see that the contribution is both the models are giving the same results. And 28% of the PMO is secondary contribution. So, because that slight variation, the results are more or less matching with the both the CMB and the PMO results. 10% and 80% of the condition biomass. So for the uh, for our day, for the CAP, it is 10% for the biomass, and for the PMO, it is coming out to be 18%. Similarly, 7 and 6% of the PMO condition by and for sector. So uh, simple that is uh, both the results are giving more or less same comparison. It gives the confidence that the approach that you are forward is more is exactly the right way that we have approached. Next slide, please. So based on that, we have identified a lot of interventions already mentioned in the report. So, uh, so the major contributors are basically the transport sector, uh, industries, and the residential sector. Accordingly, we have suggested some measures. But uh, uh, the, the, uh, one of the drawbacks of this particular model is we can't measure the quantify the analysis, intervention as well. How much it is contributing to the overall? Like, suppose I'm saying that you have to do manual sweeping for whatever mechanical sweeping you have to do, but how much that is reducing the airquality that cannot be arrived at this particular modeling approach, but for dispersion modeling that can be done. So, whatever that intervention you are uh, doing in, in, in the dispersion model, you can quantify that particular, how much that particular intervention is uh, contributing to the reduction of airquality or that, that can be done using dispersion model. Here, that part cannot be done because we are using the dispersion modeling. So, we have identified a lot of interventions, and these are some of the things that we need to concentrate. Let's just be control the major transition size and city to barrier cleaning and rest of the things. So, you can find that also capacity building of production control and other battery allocations because staff is set and equipment, these are some of the things. Then, penetration of LPG because the OC is a low within the city. And the contribution of biomass is not that much, but it is coming from outside the city. But you need to consider that also. So, uh, the LPG penetration should happen in a time out manner and distribution of two free cylinders in winter for two people to go for and that can be one of the options to reduce uh, uh, pollution from the domestic sector. Then, traffic congestion management actions of free flow of traffic this can be done. So, awareness program it is very much important, awareness is key for any of the activities that we are following. So, you have to encourage people to use non motorized transportation, at least within the city, you are targeting for a short distance, don't use uh, motorized vehicles. So, that's another thing that we can do easily. And the introduction of non motorized lanes, wherever possible, within the city, that can also be arranged. Then, increase land use, we are going to look at the land use, the open places are primarily higher in Patna. So, if we can increase the plantation open places within the city, that is also possible. So, uh, this is some of the interventions that we have quoted here, but more information related to this in the report. Uh, but the international what I have to say is that uh, because uh, they, we had a study in 2019, the report is released in 2000, after that I know a lot of interventions that are happening already happened in Patna city. So, that is not able to capture in this particular study. So, there is a need of a regular source of motion study, maybe you can go on. Uh, real time for some of can be done, or for some study, once in three years can be suggested to see the effectiveness of the impact that we have adopted. So that is needed. And in addition to one more important point that has been noted, that you have to go for a uh, air set approach rather than concentrating on the city. Because in the city, when you look at the uh, results of the system, the dispersion model, 48% of the production is coming from outside the city. So you 
that is not in the city control. So, what you have to do is you have to work on an action approach. In accordingly, you can release the pollution. So, not with uh, actions taken within the city is not only the solution, you have to come, uh, come, come up with that. Overall, wherever the first word, wherever the city is, the pollution are higher, you have to uh, arrive at a uh, interventions in all the cities. Only the pollution within the city can be reduced. That's all about the uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for sharing your views about the report. Uh, just an update, uh, our principal secretary, uh, Shri Deepak Kumar Singh, has uh, left due to prior meeting commitments. Now we will invite uh, our guests to, uh, to accept a small token of appreciation. May I request uh, Vishal and Anup uh, to give the mementos to our esteemed guests. Firstly, to the Honorable Minister, To the chairman, uh, Bihar State Pollution Control Board. The head of Forest Force, Mr. Atidoshji. To the member secretary, Asian Development Research Institute. Mr. R. Suresh, now may I request Ms. Pooja Tiwari, India Coordinator from Bloomberg Philanthropies, to share her views about the study. Neeraj Kumar Singh, Honorable Minister, Department of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of Bihar. Uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar Ghosh, Chairman Bihar Pollution Control Board. Sri Chandra Shekharji, Member Secretary Bihar Pollution Control Board. Uh, Professor Prabhat Ghosh, Member Secretary Asian Development Research Institute. Um, Sri R. Suresh, Fellow and Area Convener, the Energy and Resources Institute, Terry. Um, other fellow panelists, all the stakeholders and participants present. Namaskar and greetings from Bloomberg Philanthropies. Firstly, I would like to congratulate the Bihar government, including the State Pollution Control Board, the Patna City, the Energy and Resources Institute, Asian Development Research Institute, Center for Environment, Energy and Climate Change, and all stakeholders for the launch uh, of the source apportionment study uh, for the city of Patna today. Bloomberg Philanthropies is a nonprofit foundation set up by Michael Bloomberg. We support work in 810 cities in 170 countries around the world. And in India, we are delighted to be working with a consortium of partners like Terry, Shakti Sustainable Energy Foundation, C-STEP, Adri, and others on a technical assistance initiative in support of the National Clean Air Program in partnership with the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. As part of this, we support work at the national, state, and city level, and it is indeed a privilege to work with the state of Bihar. I take this opportunity to congratulate the Bihar government, which has demonstrated leadership in recognizing the gravity and urgency of the challenge and pioneering efforts that put evidence and data at the forefront. The Patna Source Apportionment Report is in continuation to the launch of the evidence-based uh, Patna Clean Air Action Plan in 2019, which as uh, Member Secretary Sir, uh, mentioned, is based on the dispersion modeling developed by the State Pollution Control Board collaboratively with ADRI and CSTEP in efforts to mitigate air pollution. So maybe I'll not go into the technical because that we very expertly, uh, uh, Mr. Suresh has already explained about that. But in more general terms, we know that air pollution is a major challenge, not just in India, but globally. And air pollution is not only an environmental challenge, but also has implications for public health, uh, quality of life and economic development. 
the World Health Organization estimates that 90% of the world's population breathes air that is unhealthy, and that in 2016, the air pollution cost the global economy US $5.7 trillion, or 4.4% of global GDP. As this study also demonstrates, air pollution is a really complex problem with many different causes and sources contributing to air pollution, including transport, cooking with biomass of wooden households, industry, power, waste burning, construction, and also uh, you know, sources outside the city. So because it is so complex, it can often seem intractable, but with all the immense difficulties that it has brought, the period of the lockdown has demonstrated that air quality can improve and it is possible to make a difference to the levels of air pollution. However, it is important to remember that there are examples from different parts of the world that show that progress on air pollution is possible in other circumstances as well. At Bloomberg Philanthropies, we strongly believe in the power of data and understanding the sources and causes of air pollution and where it comes from is critical to be able to form targeted evidence-based policies and actions to help reduce air pollution. And indeed, when we look at international examples of trying to reduce air pollution, we find that evidence and data have played a critical role in helping improve air quality, because ultimately you can't manage what you can't measure. I'd like to share an example from New York City. When Michael Bloomberg was mayor of New York City, he launched Plan YC, a plan for a greener, greater New York. As part of this plan, improving air quality in the city was the key goal. So working with partners, the city launched the New York Community Air Survey, installed street level uh, air quality monitors to more accurately pinpoint the sources of pollution. With increased monitoring and data analysis, it was found that just 1% of the city's buildings were causing as much pollution as of the city's cars and trucks put together. Because one of the biggest sources of air pollution in New York was heating from buildings where boilers were burning dirty oil to derive heat. In order to address this, regulation and laws requiring a reduction of sulfur content and eventual phasing out of the dirtier heating oils was introduced and the NYC Clean Heat Initiative was launched, which communicated with and engaged with the residents, building associations, managers to switch to clean fuels for heating. Buildings, um, nearly 6,000 buildings converted to cleaner fuels. As a result, sulfur pollution reduced by nearly 70% and PM2.5 reduced by over 20%, leading to New York City having its cleanest air in 50 years. If one really thinks about these factors of success in this case study, it's a strong mandate and priority from the government leadership and therefore strong interagency coordination within the government. Second, robust research data and evidence that helps identify the problem, pinpoint sources and track progress. And third, strong partnerships among city government, civil society, business, residents. Of course, while each city and country has its own unique context and conditions, data and evidence on air pollution are crucial. But both policy action and data analysis along with a collaborative approach are needed to progress side by side with better evidence leading to a more informed um, policy and effective actions for cleaner air. And Bihar is a leading example of that with multifarious actions already underway based on you know, the, the previous studies, the cleaner action plan, like the source apportionment analysis and setting up of a PMU for implementation, increased monitoring using latest technology, citizen involvement, regulation like banning older vehicles, push for e-rickshaws uh, e and e-buses, and many other actions in its efforts to fight the challenge and work for clean air and blue skies for its citizens. So many congratulations again to everyone. Thank you very much and over to the moderator. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your views on the importance of data. Now, may I request uh, Ms. Suruchi Badwal, Director, Earth Science and Climate Change from the Energy Resources Institute to share her comments on the report.
thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to uh, i hope you can hear me yes ma'am we can okay thank you very much for giving me this opportunity uh, we do feel privileged to contribute to the uh, national clean area air program of the government of india and bloomberg philanthropies to provide our services in related areas i would congratulate the government of bihar in spearheading these activities in patna also highlighting the potential for scaling this up in some of the other cities too within the state and elsewhere in india terry prides itself in undertaking source apportion and studies for various cities across the country with the objective to meet india's goals related to a cleaner environment and a safer planet and therefore studies like this they present huge opportunities for governments both at the national and sub national levels uh, uh, to basically assess the situation within their cities and towns and see what kind of policy measures can basically be implemented curtailing pollution levels has to be a priority by all means and therefore such studies which help understand the various sources of pollutants provide a targeted way for decision making i feel and investment for both soft and hard measures that can be leveraged so you know uh, whatever studies are being carried out of course we basically aim that they are you know the results of these studies are are taking taken cognizance of in the decision making processes and of course while they are being taken cognizance of what we expecting from the policy makers and the decision makers are to basically take forward certain recommendations which of course we could see you know in suresh presentation some of the things that he was basically suggesting now these suggestions would basically mean to some extent some degree of investment uh, and uh, of course it would be mix of regulatory uh, policy and hard measures that basically would need to be implemented uh and therefore uh, uh you know source of portionment studies provide a a, a thorough uh, uh process for decision making because uh, you know you're basically uh, going down to finer details of the various sources that are contributing and therefore you can basically invest uh in interventions which are related to those core areas and it's not a blanket approach of making investments in interventions uh uh with this in uh, context basically i would like to uh, give my best best wishes to all the partnering institutions who contributed to the study including adri c step wri india and we do hope from terry that we have further opportunities to undertake similar kind of studies in other settings both within the state in bihar as well as in other parts of india and with that i would basically close my statement uh, yet again congratulating the entire team who has contributed to the work these efforts thank you thank you ma'am i now request professor ak ghosh chairman bihar state pollution control board to give his special address hello hello honorable minister environment forest and climate change uh, sri nilesh kumar singh ji asutosh ji pk bhosh ji tan sekar ji atul aditya pandey ji kumar sharma ji और अन्य अतिथि जो डिफरेंट संस्था से आए हुए हैं वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई लाइक टू कन्वे माय सिंसियर थैंक्स टू एरी एंड रूमिस एंड आग्री टू प्रोवाइड दिस रिपोर्ट दैट विल बी वेरी यूजफुल इन लॉन्ग रन एज फार एज पॉल्यूशन कंट्रोल बॉय इज कंसर्न और स्टेट ऑफ बिहार इज कंसर्न on behalf of bihar government and bihar state pollution control board i convey my most sincere thanks to all the partners who have contributed in this study particularly i am uh, grateful to bloomberg foundation 
with which we have a very long association and also Terry. We are working with pretty long time and we are hopeful that more things will come up. Uh, already many views have been presented about this study and uh, air pollution. I will add just a couple of points, a few points that are of my interest. Usually, the, the normal thinking is there that whatever pollution is there, air pollution is there, that is coming through vehicles or industries. This study has confirmed that these are not the only two sources. There are other sources also, like biomass burning, that is very important, or even the building construction and road construction. And unfortunately, Patna, or majority of Bihar, is uh, geologically prone to air pollution. We are sitting on the bank of River Ganga. The soil is alluvial. And due to that, we are always prone to dust formation. And if you study the reports, the different reports coming out about air pollution in Patna, you will notice that majority of the air polluted is PM2.5 instead. Other parameters are almost under control, but we, we have the problem of PM2.5 and also 10. That is a real problem. And for that, so many factors are responsible. I'll mark two points that is uh, not included in this report. That is through my another project that I'm working on with uh, Indo-UK partners. Uh, I also study the aerosols in Patna, city of Patna. And besides your finding, one finding I will add, that is new finding that will be published in coming month, that we have found that in the aerosol, the microplastic particles are also there. They have come up. That is a big issue. Because, you know, microplastics are carcinogenic also. It may cause cancer also. And microplastic has not been reported in any study till now. And this is unfortunate that due to burning of the plastic and due to the disintegration of the plastic waste in nature, the, the microplastics were already in the soil, they were already in the uh, food chain, but now it has come also in the uh, aerosol. And if aerosol has microplastic, that is going to be a big challenge in future. We use the Raman spectroscopy method, and through that this analysis has come up. We are working with the University of Manchester in that direction. And another thing, that we have many initiatives. We have action plan in place. That is there. But the main problem is implementation. Making environmental laws, making studies easier. But bringing them on ground that is very difficult that I have, I have come through, come to know through my three and a half years stint in the Bihar State Policy Control Board. We worked very hard for banning of carry bags. And it was very successful initially. In the first two, three months when Bihar government announced the banning of the carry bags, and we did lots of, you know, awareness programs and so and so forth. And it was very successful. People started to bring their own growth bags. But slowly, you know, the implementing agencies, they become slack. And today, if you go to the markets, again, the plastic carry bags are randomly added. There is no check up at all. I feel very sad. We have invested lots of energy, lots of efforts for this ban and change in behavior. And after successful change of behavior, it reverted back. I request my honorable minister, he is so young and dynamic and energetic, to take some initiative to get implemented the law, sir. The laws are already there in place. The only thing is the implementation. And the problem that we face, that pollution control board cannot implement all the laws. For implementation of laws, there are so many line departments. Unless all the line departments don't put their head together, these things cannot be resolved. Whatever study you do, whatever plan you do, whatever law you make, it won't succeed unless we put our heads together. That is one thing. And second thing, it's really important that a problem like air pollution cannot be solved by only government departments or only state pollution control board. It should be through community participation also. Unless the community is not aware about their responsibilities, 
that they also have their control as far as combating their policies in there is not going to be resolved. Some of you have given alarming figures that the number of persons uh, death uh, recorded due to air pollution worldwide is 7 billion. So you can imagine that if 7 billion people are dying due to air pollution, how severe this problem is. And you also WHO study says the 91% of global population is exposed to air that exceeds the limits on pollution level set by the WHO. So that is, these, these facts are alarming. And that is the demand of the time that all of us, all the stakeholders, so the government body, forest department, the yeah. state pollution control board, road construction department, and other, other related departments, and uh, overall, the mass, the public, for whom we are working, they should join hands. And everybody, if they, uh, they join hands and put their bits and bits together, then this problem can be solved. I'm optimistic. I don't say that the things have become uh, no no return, no kind of return. We can reverse it. For reversal, we need lots of work and cooperation from all the stakeholders. And I'm sure that Bihar will be a leader as far as combating their pollution is concerned with our efforts. And fortunately, our minister is very young. Uh, uh, for me, uh, he is as young as my son. And this is so energetic working from day one. And I'm hopeful, sir, that you will do uh, needful to, to motivate not only the state departments, but the public also, the general public also, to come together and combat this uh, this problem, for welfare of everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for sharing the views on the sources of pollution and the Implementation is a challenge, uh, but we really hope that we all come together and uh, make Patna a really cleaner city. May I now request our Honorable Minister to share his special address. Thank you, Mr. आज के इस कार्यक्रम में यहाँ उपस्थित हमारे पॉल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड के चेयरमैन सदस्य शोक घोषाल Member Secretary Chandrasekhar Ji, PCCF of Respected Astos Ji, Ish Hall Mokastit, Sabhi Samanit Sadashigan, Teri Adri, Ke Sabhi Samanit Sadashigan, Ebam Gurumbarg, Ke Se Jude Vip Puja Ji, Aap Sabhoon Ka Hum Ish Kajkar Me Swagat Karte, Vinandar Karte. Aur Sabse Pahle, हम गुरुमार को बिहार की ओर से धन्यवाद देना चाहेंगे कि आपने तेरी और आदरी के माध्यम से जो यहाँ पर सर्वे कराया है बिहार के पॉल्यूशन पटना के पॉल्यूशन के बारे में वो काफी बेहतर है जैसा कि डिटेल से हमारे अशोक जी ने बताया कि यहाँ पर क्या परिस्थिति है और क्या यहाँ पर पॉल्यूशन का लेवल एक्चुअली हमारी सरकार भी इस चीज को लेकर के चिंतित है और हम ही नहीं पूरी दुनिया पूरा वर्ल्ड ग्लोबल वार्मिंग को लेकर के चिंतित है जिसमें पूरी दुनिया काम कर रही है हर कंट्री काम कर रही है हर स्टेट अपना अपना काम कर रही है और बिहार में भी हम लोग कई स्तर पर इसके समाधान के लिए काम कर रहे हैं इसके सर्वे के लिए काम कर रहे हैं हमारे डिपार्टमेंट की तरफ से भी यहाँ पर कई मॉनिटरिंग स्टेशन लगाए गए जिससे पॉल्यूशन लेवल का पता चलते रहता है अभी हम बात कर रहे थे अशोक जी से कि कितना लग चुका है तो हमारे पास लगभग बारह शहरों में तेरह शहरों में ऑलमोस्ट लग चुका है और बाकी लगना है पूरे राज्य में चौबीस मॉनिटरिंग स्टेशन हमारे यहाँ लगना है और इसके अलावे जो भी हो सकता है हम लोग कर रहे हैं हमारी सरकार कर रही है 
लेकिन ये डिटेल सर्वे आने से निश्चित रूप से हमें बड़ा फायदा मिलेगा और इसकी जानकारी मिलने से हम इसके समाधान की ओर जा पाएंगे हम बार बार धन्यवाद करेंगे तीनों संस्था का और खास करके ब्लूमबर्ग का जिन्होंने इसके लिए फंडिंग की है हम उनका निश्चित रूप से वेलकम करते हैं स्वागत करते हैं धन्यवाद देते हैं और साथ ही एक वो आग्रह भी करना चाहेंगे कि जिस तरह से आपने वोट लगा करके पूरी दुनिया में आप काम कर रहे हैं हमारे सहयोग के लिए काम कर रहे हैं तो इसके संभावनाओं के दृष्टिकोण से भी क्या हो सकता है अगर उस पर भी काम करें हम रिक्वेस्ट इसलिए कर रहे हैं कि बिहार हमारा गरीब राज्य है और अगर आप यहाँ फोकस करते हैं तो निश्चित रूप से गरीबों का दौरा आपके संस्था को मिलेगा वैसे एनडीए की सरकार माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी काफी इनर्जेटिक काफी उत्साही है और निश्चित रूप से हमारे देश को लेकर के काफी बड़े बड़े काम कर रहे हैं और जिस तरह से पर्यावरण को लेकर के पूरी दुनिया चिंतित है तो हिंदुस्तान में भी माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी चिंतित हैं और किन किन चीजों से हमारा प्रदूषण लेवल बढ़ रहा है उन चीजों पर विशेष फोकस उनका निश्चित रूप से है जिसको लेकर के कई योजनाएं चलाई गई आप देख रहे हैं कि जब प्रधानमंत्री हुए उसके कुछ ही दिन बाद हमारे देश में उज्ज्वला योजना चलाया गया जो कि गरीब महिलाएं हमारे यहाँ लकड़ी पे खाना बनाती है उससे काफी बड़े पैमाने पे गैस निकलता है काफी पॉल्यूशन फैलता उस पॉल्यूशन को रोकने के लिए प्रधानमंत्री जी ने उज्ज्वला योजना जो फ्री में गैस का व्यवस्था किया जा रहा है वो काफी बड़े पैमाने पे दिया गया है जिसका बड़ा फर्क हमारे देश में निश्चित रूप से हुआ है क्योंकि जो गरीब महिलाएं खाना बनाती थी लकड़ी पे एक तो पहला प्रॉब्लम खड़ा होता था कि लकड़ियां कट रही थी उसका बचाव हो गया दूसरा लकड़ी चलने से जो पॉल्यूशन फैलता था उसका बचाव हो रहा है और जब वो खाना बनाती है एक महिला जो वहां से इंटरनल धुआं निकलता है जो उसके श्वास में जाता है तो एक दिन खाना बनाने से लगभग पंद्रह सिगरेट पीने के जैसा नुकसान होता था जितना होता है उतना नुकसान एक दिन के खाना बनाने से हो जाता था महिलाओं को आप देखते आप देखते होगा कि ग्रामीण परिवेश में जो गांव की महिलाएं होती थी उनको बहुत जल्द अर्ली एज में टीबी हो जाएगा और कई तरह की बीमारियां हो जाया करती अब हम समझते हैं कि इससे काफी बड़ा बचाव ग्रामीण महिलाओं को हो रही है और ये कार्यक्रम माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के विशेष रिकॉर्ड से ये हमारा सक्सेस हो पा रहा पूरे देश में अभी जब हमारा देश आजादी का ये पचहत्तरवा आजादी का वर्ष मना रहा है जिसे हम लोग अमृत महोत्सव के रूप में मना रहे हैं तो अमृत महोत्सव के तहत पर्यावरण डिपार्टमेंट को भी विशेष निर्देशित किया गया है पर्यावरण को लेकर के और उसमें निर्देशित किया गया है कि जो हम लोग रिवर बेड उसके यहाँ उसके किनारे में प्लांटेशन करें तो मुझे लगता है कि बड़े लेवल पर हम लोग अलग से प्लांटेशन करने वाले हैं इसका बड़ा फायदा मिलेगा वैसे हमारे स्टेट का प्लान भी है कि इस साल हम लोग पांच करोड़ पेड़ लगाने जा रहे हैं और पांच करोड़ पेड़ अगर हमारे स्टेट में लगता है इस साल तो इसका भी बड़ा चेंज आएगा बड़ा इसका फायदा मिलेगा और जो भी हमारा प्लांटेशन का अभियान है इसको हम लोग बड़े लेवल पर करना चाह रहे हैं हमें अलग से भी आप जो यहाँ के लोग हैं वो समझ देखते होंगे हमें अलग से भी इसकी योजना चलाई हुई है जो स्टेट के हॉस्पिटल्स हैं उस हॉस्पिटल के अंदर जो गरीब लोग आते हैं उन्हें रहने बैठने का जगह नहीं होता है तो हम लोग हॉस्पिटल के अंदर प्लांटेशन कराए हैं बड़े बड़े नीम के पेड़ हमने उसका नाम भी दिया है नीम हकीम योजना जो नीम के पेड़ अपने आप में औषधीय पेड़ होते हैं जिसके होने से आसपास का वायु प्रदूषण होने से बचता है और मुझे लगता है कि इसका भी बड़ा फायदा जो यहाँ के लोग हैं उन्हें मिलेगा और इस तरह के कई काम हमारे सरकार चला रही है हम लोग काफी सजग हैं कि हमारे राज्य में भी पॉल्यूशन लेवल जो बढ़ता जा रहा है वो जल्द से जल्द कम हो और इसको हम लोग महसूस कर पाए देख पाए जो पिछले दिन लगातार लॉकडाउन चलता रहा है तो फर्स्ट लॉकडाउन में हमने इसे काफी नजदीक से महसूस किया क्योंकि हम लोग जब पटना से उत्तर बिहार के लिए निकलते हैं जो फोर लेन की सड़क है जो पूर्णिया तक जाती है तो वहां से जब भी हम लोग पहले गुजरते थे तो बाय एंड में हिमालय पर्वत होता है वो कभी नहीं दिखता था लेकिन जब लॉकडाउन में हम लोग आना जाना शुरू किए आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ वो पूरा का पूरा हिमालय पर्वत हमको फोर लेन से दिखाई देने लगा तो वो इससे पूरी तरह क्लियर हो जाता है कि हमारे वायुमंडल में कितना ज्यादा डस्ट है जिससे हमारी विजिबिलिटी कम हो जाती है हम दूर तक देख नहीं पाते हैं 
इससे कितनी परेशानी होती है और कितने लोग इफेक्टेड होते हैं कितनी तरह की बीमारियां होती है ये इससे स्पष्ट हो गया तो हम लोग इसके प्रयास में लगे हुए हैं कि इस चीज को हम कैसे कम करें एक तो अवेयरनेस का कार्यक्रम हम लोग का चल रहा है ऐसे भी आप लोग भी जो जहाँ है वहाँ अवेयरनेस को चलाए की लेवल को हम लोग कैसे कम करें इसको बढ़ाए ना जो पॉलिथीन बैग है हम लोग कम से कम इस्तेमाल करें वैसे हमारी सरकार हम लोगों ने तय किया है कि पॉलिथीन लेवल को पूरी तरह बंद करने का घोषणा भी कर दिया है सरकार भी इसकी घोषणा कर चुकी है तो हम लोग उसका मुस्तैदी से पालन करें और जो भी यहाँ पर पॉल्यूशन उत्सर्जन का सेंटर है समझते हैं कि जो चिमीज है जो इंडस्ट्री है जो कीट भट्टे हैं इन सबों का पॉल्यूशन लेवल कैसे कम हो उस पर लगातार हम लोग घोष भी बताए हम लोग बात करते रहते हैं कि सबों को निर्देशित करना है कि कम से कम पॉल्यूशन लेवल हो जितना मिनिमम हम लोग कर सकते हैं उस पर लगातार हम लोग काम करते रहते हैं और हमें काफी उम्मीद है कि हम लोग इसमें निश्चित रूप से सक्सेस की ओर आगे बढ़ेंगे और हमें सफलता मिलेगी ये हमारा विश्वास है हम फिर से जीवन संस्था को फिर से धन्यवाद देना चाहते हैं बहुत 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 धन्यवाद और आप सब लोग इकट्ठा हुए हम लोग भी धन्यवाद सर थैंक यू सर मे आई नाउ रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर प्रभात पी घोष मेंबर सेक्रेटरी एट आदरी टू शेयर हिज कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स एंड वोट ऑफ थैंक्स फॉर टुडेस इवेंट चंद्रशेखर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी Professor Barbara Harris White of Oxford University is delivering an online foundation lecture for the Social Science Institute in Kolkata. Professor Harris, uh, Professor White is a leading figure in research and development politics with special interest on India. She has worked in India for 20 years. Now she is a person with me. The aspect of the lecture is very important. I read it out in good. In the 21st century, all social scientists and development experts will have to be ecological scientists. As well, new knowledge of fields in the development will translate disciplinary boundaries. Presently, development requires more evolution of physical process guided by natural law and social process governed by division of labor. and distribution of wealth unfortunately capital creates a great rift between these two processes along with its positive contribution towards technological progress if i care to examine the evolution of agri in the last three decades this paradigm shift in development research program becomes quite apparent to me many of you will be surprised to know that In recent years, Audi receives more requests for research and environment than on economic development traditional issues. That is, we are seeing something in this area. The young team of professionals at Audi, Vivek Jaisi and his friends, are putting their best foot forward to face this challenge, and we are hopeful that we shall be able to contribute substantially in environmental research in the near future. Special focus on behind. Towards the task of proposing a word of thanks, I first express our deep gratitude to see Nilesh Kumar Singh, the Honorable Minister of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change, for behind, for being with us this afternoon. Your presence here, sir, not only indicates your commitment to face the environmental challenge, 
It also gives us encouragement to work further to accomplish the political environmental goals. I sincerely hope you will continue to help and encourage us in future also. <coughs> I'm sure with your guidance, Bihar will reach new heights in the field of environment and climate change. We are also that to see Deepak Tawashin, Principal Secretary Department of Development, Forest and Climate Change. As I said before, he had to live prematurely. Ever since he has entrusted the responsibility of Principal Secretary, he has been working with enormous division and deep commitment. We all know that to meet environment change, the role of the state is most critical. And this room demands administrators of a different gender, of which Siddhi Bakuna Singh is a member. I again record my thanks for him. Among the senior professionals sitting in this desk, I first thank C. Arshwes from Terry, who was a member of the team that prepared the report that was presented today, released today. From the content of the report, one can easily make out that its preparation required high professional competence, and CCC Suresh is one of those persons to have that confidence. Along with Sishwes, I also thank other members of the team in Australia. I am also thankful to Ms. Pooja Tiwari and Ms. Suruchi Vadwal from the Bloomberg Foundation who have provided the valuable resource to complete this study. We all know that Bloomberg is in the forefront of promoting environmental research in India at least. And as Mr. we said, in other countries too. And let us record our appreciation from the organizations for this substantive and Sorry. Sorry. Finally, I express my thanks to see the United State Most Commission Control Board, two most important pillars of which are here, Sarite Ghosh Chairman and C.S. Chandrasekhar Member Secretary. We all know two of them together, not only managers BS, BCB, <coughs> but also acts as a source of information and energy for all professionals concerned with pollution and other environmental issues. I sincerely hope that the leadership of Mr. Ghosh, BSBCB will continue to play that role in the future. I am also thankful to Sri Ashutoshi for being with us this afternoon. And finally, I thank you all, participants, organizers, members of the media, both from print and reading, colleagues from Agri, U.S. Department of Environment, and uh, other organizations that are there. With these words, I thank you all again. Thank you, sir. May I now request uh, all the guests and the team to have a group photo with the launch uh, report. for attending the report launch ceremony. The report will also be available online at Adri website as well as the Bihar State Pollution Control Board website. I would also request everyone to proceed to for high tea towards the fire area.